I'm Mark Tibbetts with the Charming Vintage Chapel LLC. I'm here to present to you on the Gold's uh, Vintage Chapel wedding venue at the intersection of Broad Turn Road and County. The 1.86 acre parcel is located in the rural farming manufacturing housing zoning district and is the site of the former uh, First Universalist Parish Church. Um, the proposed development will maintain the existing place of worship use allowed in the RFM zone by providing the use of the existing church to allow couples to get married within it. Uh, these wedding ceremonies are considered religious service meeting the definition of the place of worship and use. Uh, the remaining function of the property is the reception following the religious ceremony. Uh, the existing hall on the property is, uh, is going to be used for inside receptions for, for uh, prep for uh, workspace prep for any of the reception outside. Uh, in addition, uh, the applicant has uh, planned to construct a paver patio and awning connecting the two buildings to provide a covered uh, a social area for guests. Uh, also, uh, the applicant is also intending to erect a larger uh, party tent to allow for outdoor receptions. Uh, the intent is to keep the awning and reception tent erect from early spring to early fall and disassemble it during the winter months. Uh, it is also anticipated that as typical, the weddings will be on you know, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday in the afternoon into the evenings. All of these structures and features of the property will be accessory to the church, uh, which is why we're here to look for the approval of the special exception of the adjunct, adjunct use to a place of worship. Uh, the uh, development will utilize the existing on-site well, the existing uh, overhead power, telephone, and cable. Um, the existing septic field was not going to be large enough to sewer service uh, to the new uh, expansion of the event center. Um, the septic design was pre uh, prepared by Longview Partners LLC and it was built this past summer. Uh, we do understand that traffic is uh, going to be a concern in these, uh, this area, just mostly because of the intersection. Um, a traffic study will be prepared uh, as part of the, uh, the town's site plan approval. Uh, site plan uh, plan board uh, permit. Um, we also understand that the DOT is uh, in a preliminary stage of the, of the new intersection design for that location. Um, this eventual redesign will only increase the safety in this area, uh, making the site's traffic impact even more safe. Uh, we have been in communication with the fire department to discuss any additional fire suppression requirements with proposed use of the facility. The fire chief uh, does need to review a couple of, unless he's already done that. Has he already reviewed the awning design? Okay. Um, but he did, he did say that he didn't feel that any uh, further fire suppression or uh, devices or sprinklers, anything like that was needed for the proposed use. He did indicate that it would be a great use of the property. Uh, we will also be communicating with the police department uh, through the plan board process. Uh, since the project will most likely disturb one acre of land, uh, the stormwater management of the property will need to incorporate uh, stormwater quantity and quality control and erosion and sedimentation control measures. Uh, uh, this design will be reviewed by town staff. Now looking at the compatibility of the uh, proposed use in the surrounding neighborhood, um, one of the concerns was any new structures and how that uh, fits in with the neighborhood. There actually won't be any new permanent structures proposed. The, the two existing structures have been there, and uh, the church has been there for over 200 years. Um, the proposed function tent, uh, function tent will only be seasonal will be primarily screened by, uh, from County Road, Broad Church Road by the church and existing areas um, This property is surrounded by conservation land on two sides and two residential properties on either side of the uh, fairly busy uh, public and uh, public front. Uh, the generation of any of the excessive noise, such as uh, DJ 
or live music, anything like that, we will actually uh, be restricted to the daytime hours as set forth in the Good Neighbor Ordinance from the town. The applicant, Mark Tibbetts, uh, was here with me tonight. Uh, also owns A-plus party rentals. Um, he's been in the business for decades now, and he understands the business and sees a big opportunity in repurposing this property by maintaining and utilizing the existing historical character of the church, uh, which we understand that there's been several uh, businesses that have come in looking to buy the property that didn't want to do that. They, were, they wanted to re repurpose everything on the property. So um, we actually did have a plan board sketch plan meeting last uh, on Monday night, and we feel that proposed use of the property was well received by the board. Uh, obviously there are more studies that need to be uh, done to meet their standards, but it was a positive productive meeting. Uh, we are requesting that you please allow us to move forward with the proposed repurpose of this property uh, as proposed and grant us the special exception for the adjunct use of a place of worship. Uh, the applicant and I are here to answer any of your questions on the proposal. Thank you. 
the adjunct use doesn't really limit that. It may be more pertinent when we talk about the awning uh, situation in some of those things. Uh, that's all I have. Um, I don't know about uh, public comment. Anybody would like to speak to this issue? Thank you. 
ideas of this kind with a good use of the church. Um, and so, uh, to your question on, yeah, I see weddings, I mean, could it be a birthday party there? Yeah, but the, the way to make the money is to have a wedding there. They rent the hall, they rent the church, they rent the property, and they're there for the wedding. And that's kind of the focus I was thinking on. I make enough to pay the money and so on. And then when someone gets married, in, uh, I'm a Christian, so the two people get married in a, in a church, and the assembly gathers, it's an offer of worship of that couple to God, is the understanding of the theology I have. And so when I thought of it, when I was Brian, I said, you know, people get married, they're really just worshiping God, they're offering their couple up to God. So I said, you know, we're trying to keep the authenticity of the church, the beauty of that church let people get married to it because a lot of kids don't even go to church today. So maybe they'd like the experience to be married in the church and have, you know, maybe a good problem with that. So, but I see that as the most of it is someone on the road you know, it's not going to be the longest. Is every single event going to be a wedding? In other words, is every single event going to start out in the church? Celebrations of life. You know what I mean? So, in my party this thing, I probably did 10 celebrations of life in the summer. When people call me up, someone died. That's not a wedding. But it is, it could be in the church and they're celebrating the life of their, their deceased person, too. So, it's not a wedding, but someone might want to use the facility for that. But you mentioned a birthday party. A birthday party is definitely not a wedding. Birthday party is not a wedding, but it is a celebration. Churches have celebrations too. Church is functioning. They run out the hall. I do a function that's in the next Cold Week. Every year I do a whole bike and drink show for Senior Expo. Now I don't plan on you know, Senior Expo there, but you know, churches do a lot of other functions than just marry something. Is there a certain limit that you're placing on the number of people that can attend? 125. There's 67 parking spots and a massive for proposal on the side uh, for another 10 parking spots inside of the fellowship hall. And that is more for the caterer and caterer workers, the photographer, those would be there all the whole event. Do um, you think 67 parking spots is enough for 125 people? It's almost like two, two people per car. If you do two times 60, it's 120, and two times 14, that's 134. I'm talking 125, so that's the two people coming in the car. A question, Brian. Um, did this, as far as from a property tax standpoint, um, they're not going to be eligible for um, the nonprofit uh, exemption, right? For that, or possible exemption? Or, uh, not, that's not my yeah. I, I would expect not, but I, I don't know. Okay. They, I think I'm paying taxes. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. 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 We'll have a scar where everyone pays taxes. Yeah. And the unpaid tax is the Buxton property, too. Sure. Okay. No, it's part of Buxton. Three hundred and some dollars to Buxton and some three thousand some dollars to scar. Good thing. Is part of the property in Buxton? Uh, the corner where the entrance is into the property is Buxton. Not quarter eight, it's just a little strip thing. Yep. So the driveway goes across Buxton into Scarborough. Are there any off the road regulations in Buxton? Huh? Yeah. Scott, you talked to Buxton. I, 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 did. <clears throat> I did talk with the uh, code enforcement office in the planning, and they did say that pretty much everything. All the approvals for this will come through the town of Scarborough, and they just want to be able to re take a look at some everything. All the uh, submissions I've been giving a, a copy to the town for their review, and if they have any comments. But they're not looking for a site plan review or acceptance.
seasonal operation? What are the months you expect to be operating? Um, say May, May 15th, October 31st. That's about the season. So May 1 to October 31st. Yeah. Uh, and you said you're going to have day operations, hour operations. What would those be? Being open there? Yes. If you're going to have well, mostly, mostly I would say you know, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Okay. Those are in the party realm business, Saturday night's prime. Everyone wants to get married on Saturday night. Friday night's not too many for weddings. And Sunday is not too many. So it's Friday, Saturday night is prime. Okay. And what about hours of operation? Well, I would say. 8 in the morning to 7 at night? Probably on Friday. Yeah. Uh, Friday night, and then was it Friday at wedding? Saturday, the private month in the morning, and decorate, and so then we go in at 9 o'clock. Sunday, same. I don't do you know, Sunday weddings. So until 9 p.m. and just normal morning hours? Because they may be catered or whatever, so yeah, maybe it's right back in early. Could you uh, anticipate any more under roof or under tent or under awning? Areas that you don't have shown on this. No. So this would be it. Yeah. One thing I noticed is the west entrance on the facility <clears throat> looks like it's pretty close to the intersection. Yeah, it is that close. Can you estimate how many vehicles from the stop sign? Three. Uh, what kind of traffic comes down Broad Turn and stops there? And how will that affect your the end of your event or people coming in to an event? Do you have an idea of what kind of traffic coming down that uh, frequency or density? Well, in the day it doesn't seem like a lot. I mean, I've noticed at five o'clock. You know what I mean? When I've been at church, I'm trying to work on something and trying to leave. Everyone's going home, and so I take a left with other vehicles and we're about five from there. So you know, I have you know, people have been for very quiet. Stop and see them come out and then I get out. But if you had 60 vehicles, might it be a hindrance to exiting that area? It's going to be slower. Yeah. Um, and again, 135 maximum occupancy is what I think yeah. I saw. Okay. Is that based on Yeah. Is that based on the town's fire code or is that just your? Um, I was based more on the, on the septic system, on the septic system, so that it's it wouldn't be outside of your vision to maybe hold family reunions there, smaller parties, um, fundraisers, that kind of stuff. I mean, I'd like to be able to have an opportunity, but I don't see that as a focus. But as a business person, if you can fill your time when there's not a wedding or some kind of type of religious function, would you see that occurring? Yes. Okay. Um, concert? No. Band? So not that kind of noise maker. Right. I'm sorry, none of the wedding will have live bands? I, yeah, I think it might be a problem, so you might have to say to some DJ. Because DJ, the problem what I've had, I, I used to have the NBC account, and then uh, you know, they had to have the bands couldn't control their noise level, and they used to have people there with audio things, and, and they just couldn't do it. So they, they ended up restricting is that going to be a requirement that you have for renting the area I had, I actually hadn't thought of that process, but I think it might have to go that way. Because I, I, you know, I mean, if it gets too loud, then the neighbors. Are right. Yeah. And I've been to some, um, say, more rural church functions where someone has gotten married, and I've seen alcohol being consumed in the parking lot. How would you manage that? And will you allow? Any, at any point, bring a BYOB on that property or uh, go out for an alcohol license for the functions that go on? I may not go for a license, but I, I think the easier way is there's companies out there that are licensed to come in and they come in. Yeah. Uh, there's a place, the pitching post, they have four on their website, and there's you know, bar services that they're allowed to choose, and I thought that was a pretty good idea. So it's a possibility you might bring that service onto the property if. Uh, one of the customers you have requested that? Yes. So then I mean, you, you have someone that's licensed doing the alcohol. This really helps control 
liability. Correct. I'm not going to ask more questions right now. Just to tell me a little bit more about the traffic study being discussed with DOT. Um, right now, they're in the preliminary stages of that, and we're trying to get a hold. They said that they, it was in their plan, but they're having trouble finding who the actual person was that's doing the planning. So it's a little convoluted right now on who's actually doing it. So it could be closer to two or three years until they actually get something ready for construction. Sure. So it, it may take some time, but the, um, so, we just wanted to coordinate with them to make sure that what we're proposing isn't going to be their design, not work, or vice versa. Um, what the town's going to be, the planning board is going to require is an actual traffic count study of the potential and the potential impacts of the existing intersection right now. So, we'll talk more about um, this parking lot and then need for this and the ability for another connection to come off on the county road, things like that.
because they won't be doing other things that they do. And I personally think that the more this has the useful success, the better it is for the community. And so that's kind of where I'm kicking it from. And again, I think your point is different. You're saying, I'm not even sure it meets the requirement, which I think is a good angle. I think it's a legitimate conversation. Does it fit? But to me, if we decide it does fit, it should just fit. Well, then it fits for everyone, and I think that's my comment. So the that's floor is fair. I, agree and I mean, I think I asked Ryan, can they apply and say, hey, we want to open an event venue in this in this zone instead? Uh, I would be surprised if you didn't have a church rent for them. A lot of smaller churches need places to rent. I would be very surprised if you didn't have a church, a small plant come in and ask to rent the space on something. That'd be amazing if they did. Did you have a question for Ryan on that one? I get you off. Um, no, I think the town has made their stance. Well, well, it's not their job. It's ours. Well, I mean, I, my understanding is we're not deciding tonight if they qualify for this issue. I guess we have to go through the questions. Well, could you be? I, I just, are we deciding tonight if they actually qualify as a place of work? That's kind of. No, we're not classified. What, what, what the town has done, I don't know if you want to have to let them jump in. But the town, from what I've read, has said, look, this is a close enough definition that, it, from the looks of the town, the, the, the management team looked at it and said, this is a reasonable stretch as it uses the same functions as would a place of worship. No, um, I, would, I would add, though, that this helps. I think we, we made that leap based on the body of evidence that there is an existing historic structure that is a place of worship in this corner lot. If someone came today and said, I have parcel A over on the Holmes Road, the RF, I don't even know who's in the RF district, same as the RF district, in the RF district, and it's a quarter of an acre, and I want to put, I want to put a, a building on it that looks like a church, and I want to host events there. We'd say no, that's not a use. If if a church came, an organized religion came, like the Rock Church, and they said we've got a parcel, and we want to move our church there and build our church there, then we'd say yes, because that is a permitted use. We're allowing a use that's similar enough to that use to occupy a building where that used to place. Can you see a difference there? That's, that's how we made I mean, I'm not saying it's perfect. If somebody wanted to challenge it, they can certainly do an administrative appeal and challenge our, our reasoning for allowing this uh, this use to take place. I, I would ask the board not to go there tonight because that's not what we're doing. We're here to decide whether this is an adjunct use works. If somebody wants to challenge our decision, I would hope it wouldn't be the board that someone would be able to some other person. You're free to challenge it if you want, but... Uh, I, that's that's how we got there, uh, Karen. And I, I, you know, I, I'm not going to say it's a perfect fit, but it certainly is the best fit that we've seen out of I don't know 14, 15 entities that I talked to that were interested in this property. And as someone said earlier, we did the town did have a distinct interest in saving this structure because somebody else could have come in and torn it down, bought it, torn it down. I think holding wedding events, uh, ceremonies of life, I don't even see a problem with birthday parties. To me, that's a celebration of life in the other direction. So um, I don't have a problem with any of that as zoning administrator for the town of Scarborough. Uh, but certainly, if any board member does, there's, there's a, an avenue to it. Do you have any idea of the last time that this church was actually operated? I really don't. I think he's on the market for three years, maybe. Right? So I can take a stand. The question was, uh, in case it wasn't heard, uh, you know when you get the flash on your I'm not an expert on this, but the church had a Buddhist congregation in there within recent memory. Two years, please don't call me with any exact dates. Yeah, it's definitely been a few years. Yeah. And it's there have been people who talked to somebody else on our committee about it who wanted to extensively modify 
this building, which is valuable because its interior is original and it's not going to be disturbed. And if I could just don't parenthetically, like churches with all sorts of things. When I was a boy, I went to Boy Scout meetings at them. I know the church I was a trustee of here in Scarborough, we had a Weight Watchers meeting. Uh, Wait. Weight Watchers. Oh, okay. <laughs> somebody come in and say they are not going to disturb the building and they are going to preserve it and empty buildings deteriorate sometimes very quickly. They said it's very hard not to see how this is a great idea and to be pretty flexible in accommodating them and it's not going to be your rubber stamp. The planning board has got Real traffic concerns, and they will, they are very diligent. Uh, and if things went out of bounds, if I could make a suggestion, that's why Brian has got a fleet of code enforcement officers. Uh, but to uh, say you could only have the wedding, but not have the first dinner there, or not have a bar mitzvah there, because it's too much of a party. It is really changing the use. Historically, it was a humanitarian church. It's been other things. It's, its name on the National Register is odd. It's called the Prospector's Church. And it's, uh, I have not the knowledge of a person in our group, but there's been a lot of stuff done in that building that was not having uh, quiet church services. I'm quite sure. Really, you're 
appropriate closest to water is across the street on 20th Street. That would probably be your biggest noise issue. And the amount of noise is, as distance gets further away from the source, it gets wider. So, as long as you're not on the side blaring too loud, really it's the person across the street you have to worry about when you have a 400 feet of buffer that the play with to get to the other part.
police protection system. Uh, we have been in communication with the fire department to discuss any of the fire suppression requirements. Uh, the fire chief needs to review certain aspects of the construction of the awning. It's not field any further sprinkler fire suppression devices such as sprinklers are needed for the use. Uh, uh, we will be communicating with the police department through the plan board process uh, to ensure their, need, their needs are met. Poachers will not uh, result in segregation or erosion or have other adverse effects upon the water The proposed site will be required by the town of Scarborough to provide the necessary erosion control and stormwater treatment of the new impervious and developed areas per the main Department of Environmental Protection Chapter 500 stormwater rules. The design will be reviewed by the town staff in the plan.
premature for us to say that this is not an unsafe, vehicular, or pedestrian traffic condition when they don't have any of these reports. I mean, they're saying themselves, the planning board is saying to come back when they need to do more planning and they don't have a traffic study and things like that. Can we say this is this is not this is safe when we don't really know? I guess I'm kind of pushing back on that one a little bit. Because I mean, I'm familiar with the intersection. It is actually pretty dangerous. This is one of the intersections that doesn't stop. And where you're pulling out on the broad turn, that's like a blind corner as well. So I think with B, that's my only concern is, I guess I look to you and Ryan and Mark, and I say, you know, can we say that, you know, planning will take care of this and they'll make sure that they're going to make sure that this is safe? It would fall under planning's um, purview, but we have the right to say no one doesn't meet that without a if, if it doesn't meet one of the requirements and all of us, if it doesn't meet our majority of us, then that would that would preclude us from doing it. So it's a fair question. May I add, Mr. Chair, under item B, on record, it says that traffic impact analysis will be proposed by the planning board approval. So if it doesn't pass planning board approval because it fails that test, it won't pass planning board approval. So we can default and not answer a question and say you leave it to planning? No, you don't have to default. You can, you can, you have, we as a board member, we have a right to be able to say, we disagree, it doesn't fit. Um, I believe that that's not really an our purview, although it is allowed. It, 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 I shouldn't say that. It is an our purview. But I think the planning board will look more than, more than shake that out, especially given the fact that it sounds like the state's involved, too. Um, if I can back up what you're saying, yes. I think she has every right to not approve it based on her uncomfortableness or fear around something not being met. So under question B, if she felt that the analysis would not be sufficient to act as a backstop to prove that it's safe, then she would have the right right now to say, I agree with everything except for B and go against it. Well, let's just for the record, um, this, we want to take a vote whether or not um, B is not. I like wanted to stop sign and all those intersections coming together, right? Okay, I thought one was a direct route. Well. Okay. The other three have to stop. So one, you're going to be your heavier traffic to have stop signs. Yeah, it's coming up Roger. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So Ms. Shoup's comment, Project is not great. Say thank you for closing traffic. It's just an additive to see if traffic can be safe. Fair question. Discussion on that piece of data, and uh, if not, uh, I'll move that uh, we approve that section. I just want to add, Mr. Chair, this is the first time that we've seen the planning board come in with requirements when it comes to us, and I've never heard in the past that we have had issues with them not following through what they said they were going to do. Just saying from historical records, I think the planning board will do what they request, uh, require, and they requested to have that study done. And just for reference, every board member actually said that. <laughs> Did you have a second on that? It's just a clarification on B, because I think it's a legitimate point. I, I, uh... I mean, I'm willing to vote yes on B. I just want to clarify and say, like, I think we've done this in the past, I just kind of want to say, you know, we're relying on the planning board to follow through. Shoot, that's why you're here. You're doing a great job of tough questions. So I'm glad, I'm glad you asked it. I, enough so that I think we have to vote on it. Um, yeah, I find it kind of odd that this is in the planning board won't let us move forward unless we get approval from you. But we need approval from them to, on the traffic side, so it's kind of a catch 22 right now. So I'll withdraw my motion. But if you to be, had there not been something there that said that there was going to be a traffic study and the planning board's going to have final say on this, I would probably not agree with this. I would probably say that it would pass. There's no amount of exception. So there's a, there seems to be a couple of stop measures that are going to take place of us. I agree with Mr. Rubin. So I agree with Mr. Rubin. So 
all in favor of keeping that? Does anybody have any other concerns with any of the other items? No. You didn't have a second. I second it. Thank you. Nobody else has any concerns about the other items. So, if you'd like to remove the motion, I vote to approve appeal number 2617 as presented. Second. Discussion on that motion. That brings us to the next appeal, which is tied to this one. This is the tied uh, to the Uh, 
it's a code. The code thing seems kind of strange because um, if someone could put up the awning and attach it to the building, maybe that's the same vinyl as a tent. But I, I can't put a tent up, which is when I put a tent up, it was about a foot away from the thing. I could put that tent up if it was a rainy weekend, put it up on Friday and take it down, and then put lights across, which would look really pretty from building to building instead of always having a tent up. But because of the code, when I put a tent up, the code says it has to be 10 feet. But the materials in the awning and the materials in the tent are the exact same structure. But in an awning, we attach it to the building, which my tent is a freestanding thing. You know, we put a couple stakes and that's it. Um, I think the code is outdated according to when it was built, only awnings were out there. Now, even now, years past, now we're into this whole era of tents. But it's exact same materials. So my question is, can the code be changed where I can put a tent up and it's doing the same thing, but I wouldn't have to put the awning up attached to the building. You're avoiding the historical thing where maybe I'm attaching to the historical building. Uh, there that could be a question down the road. Um, or you just put a tent up and then take it down. Um, well, the code can't be changed because it's the International Building Code. It could be a, you know, life safety code. It's, it's a national code, and it has to do with semantics, but it has to do with the um, spacing between structures. So if it's freestanding, it's considered a structure, a separate structure. If it's attached, it's considered an addition to the structure. So it, it's, a, it's, it's that kind of thing. It doesn't really get to what the material is or anything else. It's actual distances between buildings that that's being addressed. In in, yeah, and, and so it's, it, it does seem a little bit silly, but that's where the problem is. It's not something that we can necessarily weigh at the moment of love. I think we just have to deal with that, uh, that issue when the time, you know, when the time comes to make the decision, can I attach or can I do freestanding and what is the requirement? I have to accomplish that. That will be dealt with through the building codes and prior to not from a land use perspective. So all we're really talking about this appeal is, does it meet the practical difficulty criteria to exist in the front side?
and there's an attachment to the structure. Is that considered anchored to the structure? Do you understand the question? My thought is, if you put some tension between the two, it could be self-supported and not attached to the structure. But you might want to support the posts of that tent from the wall and have whatever kind of an anchor, right, stabilizing those posts. Is that considered a tent? Right. Because you would normally have think you want stakes and guide wires going in all directions, but sandwiched between two buildings, you can't go up in the plane of the buildings. So it can be attached to the structure to hold in that plane. What's that considered? Well, I guess I'm not quite clear on the difference between money attached to two buildings and what you're trying to say. What I'm trying to say is, let's say he had dimension, what's the dimension between the two buildings? So he has a tent that fits perfectly between them. So you got a peak in the middle like a normal tent, the water's going to run down, and then it's going to run down the face of both of those structures. He probably wants to put a gutter or something so that people can walk underneath not getting wet, but he's also going to want to support that tent so that the wind doesn't knock it over, so that it's well supported enough, tumbling in the uh, north-south direction. But he's going to need some kind of east-west support, I believe, to keep the posts out so they don't tumble in. Make sense? I believe it. Again, I don't see the difference between Right. I, I'm not. I, I, so I don't have any. Let me, let me just say this. We don't have any detail on what the awning actually is. I don't know if the awning is one piece of cloth stretching between the buildings or if there's clerk posts in the middle of it. I have no idea. We don't have any detail. That is been provided. All, all the question to the board is is whatever design that chooses to be, can it exist in line with the buildings or are you going to require it to meet it? Where it doesn't really even touch the buildings and it's black and hard. That's that's you know that's but or you know you can still have the stone patio just don't cover it. Does it have to act? It, I guess my question is, does it have to act independent to those structures? If it acts in, it doesn't have to. If it acts independent to the structures, then it has to meet structural setbacks. Yep. That's the problem. So by attaching it because of expansion of the structure or an addition to the structure as opposed to a separate structure. And even like an anchor guy wire of any type. I, I can't say. really answer that question because I haven't seen the details. All, All right. right, I'm going to stop speaking. Yeah. So, so. anything out of me tonight. Thanks, Ray. I think you get where you're going with this. You're basically trying to, there's no definition per se at all. You've got a circular, you've got a round. Right. right. I can take a piece of cloth with a couple of two by fours and screw it into the building, and that's considered that those ones that are kind of wings out. Right. So, so what you're, I think what you're saying is exactly what Mr. Tibbs was trying to do. He's saying if, if there's no definition of what one actually looks like, if it happens to look like a tent, but it's in fact connected, it is now on. That's, that's where I'm going. And there's a reason why I'm asking the question. Okay. Out of all the questions, as you know, Mr. Chair, I struggle with for every time it comes up. Because it says there's no feasible alternative. I believe if you put an independent structure that can stand between the two, he doesn't even need to be talking to us, that's the feasible alternative. So if he has a tent that fits perfectly between those structures, and now you've got water that runs down from the peak, down the side, and goes to the edge of the building, he's not attaching to it, but he puts a gutter underneath the edges of those tents. The two edges of the tent. Now people can walk from building to building, and it's just like walking underneath the roof with no water coming down. Because all that water in the rain is going to go right down the side of the building. And anybody leaving the door coming out either side is going to get rained on. It's going to come down the roof, collect that water, and drop right down the edge of the building. So my, my point was if you could put a tent in there that was self sustained, self standing, not attached to the building, and then put a gutter on one building and a gutter on the other under the drip edge. Uh, far as you have to be 10 feet away from that. But that was the problem. I mean, that's what he, that's what he was proposing to do. I mean, he wanted, he wanted to have a tent that fit perfectly in between those buildings. Yeah. The building fire codes say that most, that has to be back away from those buildings. Even though it's a tent. Even though it's a tent. Not like an empty, not like a tent. Right. <coughs> in a way, if you're trying to get to the point where you can justify that as a If you believe 
believe that's a good idea. And it makes sense and consistent with the requirements of the report. Connecting it meets that definition, in my opinion. And so I would say what it looks like, it could look like anything. But it, it would meet the definition to allow it to if that's your own. I mean, what you were saying, basically what I was just saying, an awning, well, what's the definition of a tent? An awning. Right. Basically, you would make the same material, the same structure. You could, I could have a tent that exactly fit that. You could stay straight down. All frame tents, you don't have to go out with guidelines. So multiple tents go out six feet, five feet. Uh, frame tents, you can put a stick straight down by the leg. You will anchor a frame tent down. That's how we can go. We're keeping them very close. That's why we have frame tents. So, it's, it's the definition of an awning and tent. Another way of looking at this is, let's say it wasn't a tent at all, the farm on the off is a fixed structure. They just wanted to make up a walkway that's covered. Like an open deck to the forward. Right. That's in essence what we want. Except this allows it to come down to the season, as opposed to being a kind of structure. So I, I think I'm sorry, I think I'm going to be right on If you think of it, if you take a look, if you take the awning issue from the tent issue away, right, you think of it as a wooden structure that's attached. You think they have the same place. And that's the question right. is, do you want that? Is that a reasonable expectation for, for the requirement of this wood? That's why I would struggle with answering that there is no other thing of all because I think there are. What about a wooden structure? It's open, not closed. Okay. Well, yeah, and it's not exactly the same thing. It really has to be the building setbacks. But would it be a practical difference? Or would it have to be screwed? Yeah, it's just that. Yeah, I mean, any structure existing in the setback is going to have a variance. The wood structure has to be spread. Yeah, I mean, it gets into other issues that. We, we're not prepared to answer or discuss tonight, unfortunately, because I don't have any detail. And I don't know that Mark's thought through it far enough to have it. I did talk to Portland Cover. He's trying to, he's got to have a call from the and he was going to draw me to the side. But he didn't want to go too far because you could have not approved the adjunct use. Therefore, there was no point in getting into a lot of engineering detail. Basically, just looking at it. Think of it any way you want to think of it. The material doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's made of bricks or whipped cream. If it, if it exists and is attached to the two buildings, the question is, does it meet the test for practical difficulty if it's aligned in the manner shown on the site plan provided to the application? That's, that's really all it is. I can't, I don't know that you can get to an answer on a feasible alternative. Okay. 
property space, I would assume. And you're going to have to you push it back. You're going to have to take some, some of the pocket spaces. Oh, oh it would come yeah. in. Yeah. It had to move it back. Right. How many pocket spaces oh, would somebody lost? I'm, I'm just saying, how many would be lost if you actually push it back or should it? Probably six fire spaces. Which I don't think would be enough for the effect of the Well, I have one other question I had is I know you guys have different colored tents and stuff for birthday parties, there's no desire to put like a red and blue one in between there. Well, but the only guy can say that he's a beautiful army down there's a gray in the, on the deck, gray doors on the church, and gray deck. And he says, he wants me to come look at it. And he says, there is a real pretty color. I'm just going to add it to the color. So, I mean, it has to be something that's elegant. Mm -hmm. uh, a stripe. Just a stripe. Is this roughly the size that it's going to be? I know you said that it's going to be different. Yeah, that's, that's a 30 by 30 frame set. Height wise. I was, uh, that would be any higher than that. Most likely would be more of a traditional, you know, a traditional thing that goes straight across. Okay, so it's not going to come up with the junk. Yeah, I would try to go to the side wall. Here's my thought. 
Yeah, but the picture shows it. Here's my thought on, on the it comes to safety. Uh, I like the idea of having that there with the side on the front. That's shown so they can come around the road. Um, it's kind of a different twist on it, but for me it actually um, if you look at the picture on page, it's the last page, bottom picture, it really allowed more control of the space. And, uh, if it was deciding on the flash, let's put it like that. Which I think is kind of important. Uh, but that's my thought on it. I tend to agree with the other board members. I, I, I overall don't have a problem with it. I think actually there's an advantage to it because it does protect. So I can track the kids. That does kind of separate the safe part, the backside from the 22, which is very safe. Other um, questions now? The other side going on to the side of the church, is that like a reception hall or something? Yeah, it's a small reception hall.
stuff be alive and having stuff there is going to help increase the value of the properties around it and having
So, based on the fact that I think it's a problem, I don't think this is a pertinent question to make a go or no go. And I'm fine with it, it's strictly uh, I'll have five, anybody have five anything? Engineer, I have six. Granny and Mary's lot that have an increasingly adverse effect on the natural environment. This is one of the questions I have.